Hi everyone, it's nice to be back. Uh, today we're at Second Cup, and it's my pleasure to be here with Frank O'Day, who uh, was the co-founder of Second Cup, and something that really thrills me in my ability to, to uh, have a chat with Frank today, he is an Order of Canada recipient, which as you know, that's the highest honor you can receive in Canada. So Frank, it's a pleasure having you here, and, and welcome to your Second Cup, and uh, we'll, have a, we'll have some good chats on some things I've always wanted to know about you and, and Second Cup, and in the service industry. Well, thanks, uh, Bill. I'm uh, delighted to be here and uh, honored to be part of this process. So uh, Great. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. That's the name of the game. Right. Give me your thoughts on what it was like back then, starting up a, a company like Second Cup, and then maybe some of the barriers you had, some of the issues you had, starting up with your uh, co-founder. Well, first, uh, the Second Cup was an accident. There was an uh, accident. An accident. Uh, Tom Culligan and I were the co-founders of Second Cup, and we had um, run a political campaign in Oakville uh, while we were both working at other jobs, and. Uh, uh, Tom said to me at the end of that campaign, geez, we do this so well together, we ought to go into business for ourselves. Now, that's all well and good, but we were both 29 years old, uh, both spending about $100 more a week than we were making, so we didn't have any money. Uh, I had fortunately bought a $1,000 Canadian savings bond, so that's what we had. So this was not going to be mergers and acquisitions. That was the startup. This was the startup. It was 1000 bucks. So um, what do you do with $1,000? Well, we talked to a lot of friends, and one thing led to another, and we found an inventor an inventor in Grimsby, Ontario, who had invented a number of things, one of which was a plastic coin sorter. What does he, that have to do with coffee? And nothing to do with coffee, but we're <laughs> okay. getting it. Okay. And, and we got the rights to sell these things in Canada. It was perfect for a guy with a thousand bucks because it was done by mail order. And all we needed was some envelopes, some flyers, some stamps. Right. So uh, we hand addressed envelopes and sent them out and um, held our breath and Thirty-nine ninety-five. I'll never forget it. We opened the envelopes, cashed the checks, filled up the fridge, wow. and then as food in the fridge went down, we sent out more mail, and that was our bookkeeping system. The um, interesting thing to note here was that Tom had been in the shopping center business, and uh, he got a call from a, uh, a colleague of his, a former colleague, and said, "Listen, you leased a store in Burlington Mall to a couple who opened a coffee store. There's a space available in Scarborough Town Center." Oh, wow. Would you like to talk to them and see if they would do that? So Tom went over and said, look, Scarborough's a, uh, the best shopping center in the land, best dollar per square foot in the GTA. Yep. There's a space available for you. Would you like to open a store? Well, Bill, they said no. They said, we just had a baby, Burlington Scarborough a long way away, business not very good. No. So Tom and I, with all that research done, opened a coffee store. It was a disaster. <laughs> But we didn't have a bookkeeper, so we opened two more stores, and it was even a bigger disaster. You didn't know what was going on in the book. Well, because you see, the interesting thing about all this is in 1975, coffee stores were purely an elite business. They sold dry goods only, you know, okay. coffee beans, and people okay. came and made their own little blend, and we kept records on an index card, you know, it's before computers, and they would take them home, and, uh, and maybe a week, a month, a year later, they would repeat the order. It was just a horrible little business. Yep. How did you come up with the name? Was it Second Cup at that time? It, we started with Second Cup and, and we came up with the name. Um, uh, we, we went to the lawyers and said we need to start a business. And they said well, what are you going to call it? We didn't know. So we picked up the phone and called a friend who had been in that same election campaign who had done the marketing side. His name was oh. Jack Burkholder. Jack had done worked for Imperial Oil and done Tiger in Your Tank and all that stuff. And he was watching a commercial when we called, and there was a commercial uh, for Bud, uh, Budweiser who said, when you're having more than one. And he connected those dots and said, call it the second cup. We did, and that was the end of that story. Oh, and that's great. how we got to the second oh, cup. Now, great. it caused all kinds of problems at the beginning because people wanted second cup free and that yeah, sort of yeah. thing. But, yeah. but, uh, but we got through that and built the brand, and away it went. But back to 1975, yeah, coffee consumption outside of the home was declining at 14% a year in 1975. Hard to believe today when you drive by Tim Hortons or Second Cups or other see lineups, uh, but in those days declining it. And why was that? 
Well, because coffee was purely an ancillary product. Nobody cared about their coffee. The coffee had to be had. If you had a restaurant, it had to have coffee. But nobody really paid any attention to it. And when you went and ordered one and had a cup of coffee, it could have been, oh, two or three hours, weeks, or days old. I mean, it was horrible stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the biggest brand, the most important brand in coffee in 1975 was Taster's Choice. Arguably not coffee at all. Right. So, so we had an opportunity that we didn't even know. And that was change the environment. And that happened when we came up with the idea to put coffee by the cup in the store. And, and there were three ideas that happened, really. We were desperate. Our business was losing money. We had 10-year leases. We had three locations, Square, Square One, Scarborough, and another one conveniently located in Ottawa. We were, we were losing money hand over yeah. fist. We needed to do something. So Tom and I went and had an ice cream. And as we were eating ice cream, looking across the mall at Second Cup, three ideas, one of which changed the entire market. First idea is let's put a coffee maker on the counter, brew some coffee, let people taste it, they'll buy more beans. See it in grocery stores all the time, nothing new. Yeah. Second idea, better, let's charge for the samples. Third idea, let's charge more for the coffee than anybody else in the mall so people will know they had a good cup of coffee. Wow. And what really happened there, I only know this in retrospect, is we changed the relationship between the beverage and the customer. It was no longer about having a, co a cup of coffee, it was now about having a treat. I'm sure there are, there'll be some of your listeners and viewers who will, who, will, who will have in the last week bought a cup of coffee at two, three, four, five dollars. Right. It's not about having a cup of coffee, it's about treating themselves. Right. Went through two recessions, never saw a drop in coffee because people could always afford a good cup of coffee. That's it's remarkable. That's but, and, and, and out of that came a billion dollar industry. Frank, today was great and I look forward to doing a few more of these uh, interviews with you and getting your point of view. Thanks, Bill. Okay.